Hi, my name is Kim de Rijke. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Queensland in anthropology. My work is on coal seam gas in the Darling Downs and the Northern Rivers in New South Wales. My presentation today will be about a number of related issues to do with social impact assessment. Um, I, in, I start with an introduction of basic concepts of community uh, that are fairly commonplace in social science and anthropology in particular. I use those concepts then to interrogate a number of documents. Um, I make brief comment about the Queensland Guide for Social Impact Assessments and then move on to a particular study for the Surat gas project in the Darling Downs. Um, I analyze the ways in which that study portrays community. Uh, I talk about its methodological and analytical aspects and in the end um, make the point that a number of questions emerge uh, with respect to the strengths of its methods, uh, how it is based in the literature uh, and um, uh, come to certain questions about um, the ways in which social impact assessments are addressed in the broader approval processes of coal seam gas projects in the Darling Downs. Okay, look, I want to take you through some of the nitty-gritty of social impact assessments, uh, particularly looking at one study in southern Queensland, the Arrow Energy Surat gas project. Um, I teach social impact assessment at UQ. My postdoc is actually more about sense of place, belonging, uh, relationships to land and water within an environmental anthropology perspective, but I thought this was this deserves attention and it's a paper under review, so I, I just wanted to, uh, you know, invite comment and so on. So I'll get straight into it. Um, briefly then, um, it looks at the Darling Downs and I want to talk very briefly about some common concepts about community uh, that I think are fairly commonplace in academia. Uh, then look at some of the key aspects of social impact assessments briefly make a comment about the Queensland Government Guide and then look at the Arrow Energy SIA. So similarly to just a few maps, um, Queensland, the Bowen Basin and the Surat Basin there, those are the major areas of uh, coal seam gas production at the moment. Now this, this is just to give you an indication of the sort of competition that's going on at the moment in the Darling Downs. You see coal seam gas wells to the left, a coal mine in the centre, and broad acre farming on the right. Um, so we see this intensification of land use competition going on. And similar to Jess, um, here's a, um, a map of the strategic cropping land uh, in southern Queensland, the, the um, hashed area there. And then overlaid uh, are all the coal gas wells, which is that black mass um, there, and other forms of extractive industries based on data by the Queensland Government, just to give you an indication of the uh, intensity, I suppose. Okay, so just very briefly, some of the, the uh, views on community in anthropology. And I think that underlying my comments will be a, a focus on the dynamic aspects of community. We don't want to look at community as if, as if it is some sort of static thing that is out there miraculously. Um, or, you know, way back in 66, Silverman made a point about the cultural rules of differentiation of power relationships within communities. Um, the second quote there is about animated tensions and factions, status distinctions. There is much part of social life as solidarity, mutual regard, unified action, right? Community is an unfolding processual affair, really. One which is continually responsive to changing circumstances, rather than somehow predictable. I think that's fairly commonplace in the social science to look at community like this. So I want to look at community representations as well as, con as contextual, socio-political and symbolic acts, which in effect suspend internal differences within that collectivity, which construct a sense of similarity, drawing on particular symbols to condense a range of not necessarily congruent or harmonious meaning. And the conclusion of that is that understanding the complexities and dynamics of social life and matters of social significance really, in my view, uh, requires long-term immersion and qualitative data, 
That's not to say quantitative data is not important. It is, in my view, and the two together can build a really powerful picture of community. Now, broadly speaking, uh, I think uh, social impact assessment objectives are very uh, are well established now, and they're about creating participatory processes and deliberative spaces for, to facilitate community discussions about desired futures, the acceptability of likely impacts and proposed benefits, and importantly, community in input into the social impact assessment process itself. So to, to get to what is called you know, free prior and informed consent. I, I won't go into a discussion about that too much here. Uh, suffice to say, that's not an easy concept and much debated itself. Um, and the last point too, you know, there should be a specific focus on those worst off in society. However, and this is also very common, social impact assessment often has a minor role in our EISs, and we see it, you know, as chapter 22 in the Arrow Energy uh, EIS. There's a limited capacity of regulators, limited resources devoted to quality control. There's a tendency to produce sort of minimal uh, documents that just pass. Uh, many reports lack adequate details about the methods, sources, and assumptions, and, and the, these documents are often little more than profiling, desktop um, exercises. They lack often also an identification of the spatial, temporal, and stakeholder distribution of impacts. And we heard comments made about that previously already. Um, and, and also, they often simply don't meet public expectations. Um, and at best, are, uh, are, are seen as a process for incremental project improvement, and at worst, a simple feeble attempt to legitimize the project. And with that, public participation ranges from uh, a provision of periods for public comment to being actual active, uh, actively involved in shaping the social impact process. Okay, so the Queensland Guide, um, I mean, there is one, which is, which is good. Um, however, it, it, in my view, and this is my conclusion about this document, so I won't go into the details, um, it provides a relatively simplistic model of social life, assuming that social phenomena can be understood in the terms expressed by key stakeholders, further reduced to key SIA deliverables via quantitative analysis. It doesn't entertain this notion of free prior and informed consent, and it does not uh, include a specific focus on those in society worst off. It also does not specifically require an, an assessment of the methods uh, against the literature uh, and, and is thus encouraging not much more than a desktop um, uh, profiling exercise. And also there's no explicit requirements to integrate environmental, health or cultural heritage issues into the social impact management plan. They're different chapters, right? So they're dispersed in the EIS. And they also, and this is a, I suppose an upcoming area of cumulative impact, social cumulative impact, there's no uh, suggestions in this document as to how that might be done or how different proponents might collaborate in the assessment of their cumulative impacts. Okay, so uh, in, in the paper, I look particularly at this document, um, the Surat Gas Project, which applies to um, a large part of that map that I showed you earlier, which is um, high quality agricultural land. Uh, 8,600 square kilometers, seven and a half thousand coal seam gas wells and a whole heap of um, associated infrastructure. And the EIS was undertaken by two consulting companies, Coffee Environments in URS Australia, URSDT SIA. So uh, just briefly, some of my concerns in this, about this document, and this, uh, I suppose I'm not highlighting some of the good things in it, I just wanna you know, highlight some of my concerns. So, um, an astonishing thing here, um, I thought, was a pie chart of community knowledge about this project in 2009, where the community was divided into three categories, those who knew nothing, those who knew a few things, and those who knew a lot. Um, and this was data provided by personal communication, by coffee environments. 
without telling us anything about where this came from. I mean, these are, th th these are really poor analytical categories, right? And then they make the point that since 2009, when they started consulting the community, the issues of concern have remained largely unchanged. There remains a high level of confusion and misunderstanding. Uh, it then doesn't make any statements about what this means for their social license to operate. Um, but I suppose it's, you know, that raises questions, does it not? The SIA methods in the document is a summing up of activities rather than a, an approach grounded in the literature. There's no assessment of SIA research in the context of unequal distribution of rights. Uh, and, and this is an important part, I think. I mean, I, I mentioned this over dinner last night to several people. I mean, when we do a social scientist research in the gas fields, it's a highly contested space. And people are very, um, well, um, hesitant about who, who are you, you know? I mean, where do you come from? Who do you work for? Um, you're part as a researcher of a bigger contested space um, to do with social impacts, with proposals. You've got to be aware of you know, where you're coming from and you've got to explain these things. I would expect an SIA researcher to address these things um, and to say how is my work being received in the broadest scheme of things. Nothing in it. Mitigation strategies that are offered are similarly not assessed against the broader comparative literature on, on mitigation strategies. Um, the extent of community input into the process itself is unclear to me, and qualitative analysis is missing or poorly engaged. Here's an example of that, which I thought was also extraordinary. Um, landscape and visual impact assessment. I mean, visual amenity, in my view, is, is a very social concept. And um, the study that looked at visual impacts, made, um, it, it said this, that um, following the desktop analysis, these scientists went to do field visits focused on those aspects of the landscape with potential to be of greatest sensitivity to project activities and to gain an appreciation of those aspects of the project most likely to affect landscape and or visual values. Now, the point I'm, I'm making here is that, so it was the, the researchers who went out into the bush to determine the visual values of that landscape, right? And, and they acknowledged that there were qualitative dimensions to their questions about visual amenity, but it was them who, who went to assess the values. I, I thought that was extraordinary. I mean, there is nothing uh, in that document which tells us what do people actually think? What is significant in the, in the landscape for them? I mean, shouldn't it be the people who live there to determine the possible impacts on visual values? And, and, and these are sort of comments in the document about community where they say residents of the study area value living in a cohesive, stable community which offer a high standard of living. The pace of life combined with relatively small, stable, close-knit communities fosters a sense of rural friendliness which is highly valued. Now, look, I don't doubt that, um, but I, I want to complicate social life. I, 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 I think that is a very static, simplistic model of the way people live in these places. We have a socio-economic and political history in these areas of elite pastoralists, which was contested by smaller landholders right from settlement. Now, there was all sorts of political toing and froing going on in these areas. There's been an influx of newcomers since about the 1980s. We had huge technological advances in agriculture with changes in employment and uh, demographics. We had, in other words, social change. Where is this in this document? That's my question. Huh? We have current social tensions in the gas fields between those who see benefits and those who are opposed. And this get, gets quite nasty in certain parts of the Darling Downs where people feel abused, um, where there's threats um, and, and um, you know, intense tension within communities. That should be part of the social impact assessment, clearly. There's inter internal power differentiation within these communities and the distribution of impacts. We, you know, some people are copying a lot more than others. And within that context, then, we have a regulator whose focus is now on consultative committees. Uh, in other words, devolving responsibility from the state to the region. And huge questions emerge about the role of these committees as to how they're constituted, um, there's challenges to, the, to their representativeness. Um, 
And, and you know, this, this has to be looked at very carefully, and an SIA researcher cannot just rely, in my view, on what a consultative committee puts to him or her in a meeting. So, just a few concluding thoughts. Look, in my view, social impact assessment can be a good tool, but significant, and anal significant analytical and methodological improvements are required, at least in this document. Um, and I remind you, you um, Rosemary made the point about the Independent Expert Scientific Committee. They made similar comments about this document to do with water modeling, um, and I would say the same about the social impact assessment. In Queensland, in my view, social impact plays a minor role. It's very much uh, focused on these broader discourses of the new gas age, you know, employment, jobs, investments, and so on. And SIA is really subsumed within that way of speaking. Vulnerability and impact and risk distribution are poorly addressed. Thus, in the end, I think questions emerge about adaptive management, which is the system that Queensland has adopted. Uh, and although adaptive management has a long history, of course, I, I would question that in, in coal seam gas. I mean, in the end, if you want to put it bluntly, it's, you know, seeing what happens until shit hits the fan and then you do something. Um, that is a really dangerous approach um, when we're talking, you know, Great Artesia Basin and so on and so forth. Um, there's questions about these assessment protocols and that's been touched on as well um, as to, you know, whether the state is capable of properly assessing projects it stands to benefit from significantly. And there's questions about enforcement capacity um, within the state and human resources. These questions, in my view, require urgent attention, but we're finding this very difficult because these sort of questions are being dismissed in Queensland as desperate scaremongering. Thank you.